Hey, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Desire to Inspire. Well, I'm Gloria here, and if you know me, well, you know I love to bring on people that are going to help you not only in business, but in your life and all ways of inspiration. And so today I decided to bring somebody that actually I did some coaching with. And, you know, I love to talk, right, and, and share, and you can too. And so my special guest today is going to teach you how to get rid of that fear and get on stage and share your story. And she's got a lot of wonderful tips and ideas. So if you're brand new to speaking, well, then get on here and invite a friend, okay? Because Amanda Rose is your speaking success strategist. And this woman has taught thousands of business owners, entrepreneurs, and leaders her step-by-step proven speaking method. And I have to tell you, when I took her three-day workshop, even her whole booklet she gives you, her template, is like she's handing you everything. And as a result, since April, I have now booked about five or six different events coming up real soon that I'm really excited to share my gift and story. So are you ready to share your gift and story? So it is with great pleasure that I bring on this beautiful woman who is a success. So I just lost everyone. We're having a little technical difficulty today, but there we go. Your success speaking strategist. So welcome, Amanda Rose. Hi, Gloria. Welcome. Thank you for that beautiful introduction. I feel honored, honored to be part of your amazing journey. Well, you know, it's been fun being on the journey with you because I remember, I don't even know how I found your event last, last April, mm-hmm. but the, the, you know, there was so many wonderful gifts you brought to us and tips and tools, but I got to tell you something. What is also happened as a result is all the connections that I made at your training with the beautiful heart-centered entrepreneurs you attract. And that's been really valuable too. So I just want to let you know that you really do attract the type of people that we kind of want in our tribe. That's right. And I really, I think what we put out as a speaker, as a business owner, as a coach, whatever you consider yourself to be, as I also consider myself to be a speaker, coach, and trainer, is what you put out is what you attract. Mm -hmm. And I consider myself to be heart-based. I consider myself somebody who likes to connect with other people, to support each other and encourage other people. So that's what I fill my room with. You sure do. And Amanda, you're a best-selling author, and you've got a couple of different programs out there that you offer. So tell us a little bit of how you got involved in all this. Like, why did you become a speaking strategist? Well, you know, I think sometimes in life we end up going in places that we never thought we'd ever be. I was really, I was working as a social worker and I was happy earning a paycheck. I never saw saw myself as a business owner. I never had a desire to. And then I did a little personal development. And if you've ever done personal development, you cannot stay where you are in your life. You can't. And I remember going to these workshops and watching this gentleman, Jay Souter, who I had Life Tigers was his company. And I used to say to myself, boy, I'd like to do what he's doing. And that little voice in my head said, no, you can't. You're not good enough. You can't do it. And at the same time I was doing the personal development, I was actually had taken a job with a nonprofit as a fundraiser. And they didn't tell me I'd have to speak in front of hundreds of people. So here I am doing all this personal development, getting out of my comfort zone, speaking to groups, which I never saw myself doing. And it actually birthed the whole idea of me being a speaker, which turned into really to being a coach who trains speakers. I remember asking God, higher power, spirit, universe, whatever you want to call it, what am I here to do? And I hear a teacher and I go, I don't want to be a school teacher. My husband and I have dogs. There's a reason why. (laughs) We took the easy route. I don't want to be a teacher. It's hard work, but this is a teacher. So people may see me as a speaker or coach or trainer, however they want to perceive what I do, but I am all in my heart a teacher. So that was the driving force. That calling was the driving force in me starting my own business. And it'll be 15 years ago in October. And I've never looked back. And I love what I do. Absolutely love it. Well, I just learned something new about you. I didn't know about your background. So that's really cool how you transition to all of this. Mm -hmm. Amanda, I was at a a networking event last night and there were some amazing women there that had really valuable stories, Mm -hmm. but they're also afraid to be vulnerable. How do you help your clients get over that? 
Well, I think often the vulnerability comes from the fear of being judged is one of the reasons. What will other people think if I had this experience? And the other side of the, the hesitation to share a personal story is they don't want to take their family members, their friends, whoever they had the challenge with down the nasty path of putting them out there. Right. So if, for example, I used to have my mom used to laugh at me when I would talk. Right. And so my mom's crossed over, but I know my mom wants me to share that story because it's all part of who I am and what I do. So many people don't want to share it because they're afraid of offending their loved ones. And there's always a way to do it. So if I didn't want to mention my mom, I would say a family member, right? So that way, or somebody that was in my life to take out certain information. And the other side of it is the vulnerability. Vulnerability is by sharing your story, your personal experiences, you now become an example of, for other people how to rise above their challenges. If you don't share your experiences, they won't know how you went from breakdown to breakthrough. They won't know how you went from trial to triumph. And so they have a purpose. And the first time that somebody comes up to you and says, thank you so much for sharing your story, you changed my life, you'll never ever second guess telling your story, ever. Hmm. So Amanda, one of the other things that I hear from people all the time is, well, if I get up there and speak, am I going to actually get paid for speaking or will I get paid by promoting a program I have? And is it really possible to make a living? So how do you help people get started and get out there? So that's an awesome question, Gloria. So let me first address the ability to make money as a speaker. So there are two paths. And I think it's best to follow to do both paths. So one is the paid. Now you have to get your experience. People often think, oh, I'm just going to put speaker on my business card and people are going to hire me. They're going to pay me $10,000 to speak. It doesn't work that way. You have to no. pay your dues. You got to build a reputation. People got to love you and share who you are and refer you. And you have to be very active in your speaker marketing and pursuing those opportunities. That's one. The other side is, for a lack of a better term, which they call speak to sell. Okay. For me, that feels very male dominated energy, right? So speak to sell. So I'm going to tell you to run back to the room. That's not how I roll, but you can offer your services from a heart centered place, from a place of moving people forward because you know, they need your help and offering your services. So yes, you're selling your programs, but that's a great way to do it, to make money while you build your reputation to get the paid. Now think about in 2018 when the market went, right? All the homes, the mortgages, right? What do you think happened to those paid speaking opportunities? They disappeared, gone into thin air, right? So all those people that relied on those opportunities didn't have any other ways to make money. So if you follow the paid and the complimentary path where you get to offer your services, you have a speaker model that will serve you for years for every single economy. I agree. I, I've been seeing that happening not only to people like yourself and other speakers, mm -hmm. famous speakers, right? But even, you know, getting myself back on stage because I used to do it mm -hmm. and it did build my business. It absolutely did. And now people are actually coming to me. So it's interesting because, you know, I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to find all this time to go search here and go search there. But, you know, kind of once you speak someplace and somebody likes you, they're referring you to another person, another person. Right. And then right. all of a sudden, I just got an invite to be a keynote speaker. So I was like, wow, a <laughs> position. Unfortunately, yes. unfortunately, I have another event in France, so I won't be able to do it. But it was nice to actually have somebody reach out to me and mm -hmm. say, hey, available for this paid event. I was like, wow. And this really does work. So I'm excited for you to share some, some more tips with our guests. Yeah, so I, I think it's important, Gloria, because you are a really great speaker, right? So you have to fine tune those speaking skills. It's not, I was speaking at a group with uh, 70 women the other day. And I shared that many people think, well, and I get calls from people all the time. Well, I'm a good speaker. I'm a comfortable speaker. You have to be a great speaker. You need to be an extraordinary speaker for people to refer you. Good or great or okay, ordinary isn't going to cut it. You're getting those opportunities because you learned how to be a, a great speaker, an extraordinary speaker. That's why it's happened for you so quickly. 
Well, thank you for that. You know, and you're right, because I have watched a lot of speakers, you know, on YouTube and stuff, and you're going, <laughs> right? And, and, and here again, just said your visibility is key too. We've got to keep ourselves visible and we got to keep fine tuning our skill sets too. So even though, you know, I had a background of this, people said, well, why don't you take a training with Amanda Rose? Well, because there's always something more to learn. And what I really appreciated, Amanda, in your training, the three day uh, event that you have, another one coming up actually, we'll tell our uh, viewers about it in a little bit the templates the templates that make it so easy thank you thank you thank you why did you do that why did you give away all that material because my commitment is okay. to give something that provides tremendous value to people whether they choose to work with me further or not i want people to walk away from that event knowing that that was the best investment they made as a speaker trainer so i looked at everything that i had learned and my own personal journey mistakes that i made and also in things that I implemented. So for example, one of the things that we talk about is actually how to get speaking engagements in 30 days and do it with ease. Well, I could say, okay, well, I'm gonna tell you to work on your speaker marketing and I'm gonna tell you, you know, you need to make phone calls. No, I'm gonna tell you exactly how to make those phone calls, give you step-by-step -step systems because I want, whether somebody hires me for more, I want them to be walking around saying, Amanda Rose is amazing, you need to go to her training because not everybody can work with me further for financial reasons. And I want them to go and have enough information that makes them super successful and have a workbook that they can use over and over again. And I actually do. <laughs> and I have a virtual assistant now who's gonna be helping me in the future. And she's like, well, how do I do this? How do I make these calls? How do I write to people? And I actually, you know, typed up some of the templates for her to say, this is what you're going to do to help me. So it not only helps us as a speaker, maybe we don't have time, you know, maybe we're not so comfortable making those phone calls, but we have someone else that can help us. And you provided that. So that made it really easy. Thank you. I love to do it. You know, this is how my mind works. I remember working with my, one of my clients quite a few years ago, and we worked on her signature talk. One of the things I love to do is help people craft their talk. And I said to this person, now go book speaking engagements. I had done it. So I thought, just go do it, right? <laughs> and then she said, I don't know how. And I'm like, all righty, then we, I need to teach you, teach my clients everything that I do that created the success that I've had as a speaker. And I think one of the things that I really love is how you are a heart-centered, you know, not only presenter, but you teach us to be heart-centered and not just kind of ramble on with facts about our lives. So what tips do you have for our, our soon-to-be speakers out there that really can bring them? What, what tips do you give people to, to actually get heart-centered other than just say it? Like, what do you do? Do you have any exercises or thoughts around that? Well, I think you need to, when people are thinking of their presentation and they might have fears and doubts, they're often thinking about themselves. So you really have to get into the heart of your audience and what they need because your presentation isn't about you. It's about them. So I really, even when I can create an empowered speaker event or I create any other training, I think really, what do they need, right? Mm -hmm. I take myself out of it and I create it based on what they need help with. So it's really about focusing on them and thinking about what, what are you committed to helping them? So part of something that I do personally when I, when I, prior to speaking is I love EFT. I'm not an EFT expert, but I love tapping. So I'm, I think Gloria is familiar with it, right? So you tap on different points. So I do it really about, you know, for me, right? And you can do this as affirmations. So if I was tapping, and you can look up EFT if you're interested online or talk to Gloria about that, is the EFT. So I will say, you know, I put my heart and my soul into my presentation. I deliver a presentation that wows my audience, serves them for years to come and leaves a legacy beyond their years, meaning that they will go out, share this information, share their message more powerfully and change more lives. So I really get into that energy of it, which allows for me personally, because I'm very heart centered, it allows me to connect with my purpose in doing this. But since we're on a lunch and learn here and some of our audience is on their lunch hour. <laughs> I love it, virtual lunch and learn. <laughs> I know, lunch and learn in Tampa, that was so fun. Um, 
Can you tell the audience a little bit more about your actual hands-on type of training and coaching that you do? Yeah, I have many different programs and there are some coaches out there that don't love doing groups or they don't love doing private. They don't love doing live events. They don't love, you know, online programs. I have it all, (laughs) every single method for people to learn. And so people can hire me to work with me for a one day or a half day intensive. Like Gloria and I crafted her signature talk. I taught her an entire template for every presentation that she does. It's one of the things that lots of people hire me for. I work with people privately on their speaker marketing, how to contact groups. I have online programs from the basic speaker trainings to actually learning how to book speaking opportunities. I have a year long program called Invincible Speaker Mastery. And the one thing that we've mentioned that I have coming up, which is my empowered speaker event. And I'm so excited about this. I, I started it doing it in April, 2018, and I was gonna do it once a year. And people were like, no, you have to do it again. <laughs> so it's been April and October. And I really cover a lot in you that training do- from how to book speaking engagements with ease in 30 days. I'd lay every step out for you, how to find groups, how to contact groups, what to say when you contact groups, all the speaker marketing stuff, how to create joint venture conversations, meaning alliances that you have relationships with, that you help each other and you also help each other get in front of other stages. I mean, I lay that out for you. It's half of my workbook for the event. And then I love to cover also the things that people don't talk about when it comes to speaking is your body language your use of your voice, audience engagement. I cover how to present on video, which is key because you have to be able to do this. I used to look like a deer in headlights. This was me. Hi, I am Amanda Rose. I'm serious, it's that bad. (laughs) How to share your story. I break that down step by step. Networking introductions, how to create an offer that makes people want to buy it. (laughs) So I cover a lot in three days. You sure do. And I put the link down here for anybody that's watching oh, on the replay. Okay. So this is how you can find Amanda Rose's Empowered Speaker event coming up. What's the dates? October? October, October 3rd to the 5th. You can also go to empoweredspeakerevent.com. That will take you to that page, empoweredspeakerevent.com. Okay. Well. So empoweredspeakerevent.com. It'll take a second to forward you over. So just give it a moment to do that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, empowered, empowered speaker event. Event. Okay. <laughs> that will take you to somebody else's site. <laughs> okay, let's fix that real quick. <laughs> so, Amanda, you know, I want to I want to share something with our audience because mm-hmm. you touched upon it. You know, I remember in a speaking event that I was invited to many, many, many years ago, and it was for a computer uh, company. And I had been a business manager at the time. And because I was training my staff so easily and quickly, they were like, we want you to come and speak for us. Well, I was in my 20s. It was the first time I ever spoke to a large group. And they didn't tell me it was going to be a large group. It also turned out to be all doctors. And, you know, I'm sitting here with like all these little, you know, cards to read off of and stuff. And it was so intimidating. And I realized that the stuff that was on the card was not my expertise. It was mm-hmm what I knew. And I decided to just throw the cards to to the podium, walk out in front and engage with them with what I knew and what they need. And it turned into a dynamic presentation where they were asking questions. I was answering. They wanted to buy the computer system. I got offered a job from the company. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) And I didn't want that that particular job, but they did hire me, paying me a lot of money to go (laughs) these doctors in all their offices for quite a while until I decided I didn't want to travel that far. But it was amazing what I learned in that moment. Like you said, you had a, you were a deer in headlights. And that's kind of how I felt when I first went up there. But I felt that I was giving them information that I was not an expert in. And therefore, I was getting really, really nervous. And so it taught me a great lesson to go up there. Like you said, speak from your heart, speak from what you know, and your passion. It changed yeah. the welcome. It does because often people come to me and they might be part of a network marketing company or they might be a leader in an organization. I primarily focus on business owners and entrepreneurs, but I also will work with passionate leaders. And they'll come to me and say, here, the marketing department gave me this presentation. And they really struggle with it. And the reason they struggle with it has nothing to do about them. Meaning not their personal stuff, but it has nothing, it's not energetically them. So what you are doing is you are allowing you yourself to shine. And you have to obviously have the structure to know how to open, move the audience engagement and all that, 
those things that make that work. But you need to let you come through because your audience can tell if you're, if you're not being you. The first workshop I did a long time ago, it actually was a two day workshop. I had six, 12 people, six friends, and they brought six friends. And I walked away from that going, something's not right. And the reason being is I was so attached to be, doing it a certain way or being like my previous coach was, the person I looked at, looked as a model that I lost me in the process. Yeah. So I've worked really diligently in allowing myself to come through whether I resonate with somebody or not is not an issue for me. It's like, this mm -hmm. is me. This is, if you want to train with me, great. If you're, if I'm not a fit for you, that's perfectly okay. So I get to be me and you got to be you. That's why you shine through. Yeah. I'm really glad I got that lesson really quick. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. years, later, years later, I got thrown on the stage too. I think I actually shared that video with you. I got thrown on the stage in front of thousands of people. I was in network marketing at the time. They literally told me about five minutes prior, we need you up on stage. Nothing was rehearsed at all. And I was like, okay, I just said, yes. I just said, yes. And they just said, we want you to tell your story. That was it. And I, I shared my story and you know, it all, it not only did it get a standing ovation, but I got a lot of customers from that too, that saw it because we put it up on YouTube and other people had it on YouTube. And then a lot of them were coming to me for coaching. They were like, how did you do that? How did you build your team? So sometimes, you know, we don't really need a whole lot of prep if we really know our story, like you were saying earlier. Yeah. And so I think I'm going to, I'm going to give a little tip that will be helpful. If you're thrown into those situations where you have to present, remember this model, past, present, and future. It's something that I teach about impromptu presentations. So past, present, future. So if you're going to go share your story, there's more details that I go into at my live event. But think about it as past. Here I was. Present is here I am today. And how is my story serving me or other or and or other people in the future? So past, present, future. It allows you when you're thrown in those any kind of impromptu situations to have some structure to it. So you don't end up rambling, going all over the place, losing your train of thought. If you can keep it into that model, it's going to make it a lot easier in those type of situations. That makes perfect sense. That makes absolute perfect sense. So what other tip do you have for our audience today that you're just dying to tell them about, about your event and what you do for them? Okay, so let me share a tip around avoiding the data jump, which is one of my Oh, favorites. yes. Avoid the data jump, right? So avoiding the data jump is where you are giving so much information that your audience feels overwhelmed that they start to check out, they might go on their phone. And the reason being is that we often, as heart-centered individuals, we wanna help, we wanna serve. So we think if we give them so much more information, ev almost everything that we know, they're gonna love us. They're gonna speak highly of us. But instead, the result is that they will feel overwhelmed in the presentation and they will not hire you or recommend you as a speaker or a coach, as a consultant. Because if you're going to overwhelm them during the presentation, that means you're going to overwhelm people during start your services as well. And so an important question to ask yourself is, do they need to know this? Do they need to know this? So when you're creating your content, if you ask, do they need to know this? You go, oh, wait, no, they don't need to know this. Or they can learn this in the next step. And that will help you kind of pull back your content a little bit. And I used to be the queen of the data jump, right? That was how I thought. I was a social worker, pour so much information on them so they'll love me. But that doesn't serve you, and it doesn't serve your audience as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think all of us kind of go through that at first because we have all this knowledge in our head and we think we can give the, everybody all this help. And then we realize, like you said, it's, it's just too much. It's just and too much. Yeah. Audience is going to go to sleep or like you said, looking at their cell phone, you probably lost their interest. Right. And lots of times, people, whether they people come to my event or hire me to work with me personally, is we kind of look at what do you actually need to be sharing? How can you also include audience engagement in your points? Because if you use audience engagement and I'll teach you actual ways to engage your audience at Empowered Speaker event is that the information from goes from the head where it's a bunch of data to the heart where change happens, where they embrace the information. So from the head, it's data. It doesn't really have an impact on the life. If you incorporate your, in, include your audience in your presentation, so it's a conversation, so they're doing things during your talk, that's where change happens. That's where it goes to the heart. That's where they're really impacted positively by your information. 
I agree. I like audience engagement, actually. I found, well, the, my very first talk mm-hmm. that I read about, that's how I overcame everything else. It was like, get them engaged. It made all the difference in the world. So, Gordia, real quick. So my first presentation when I was working for the nonprofit, I had to talk about charitable gifts and annuities, the most boring mm-hmm. topic in the world, right? I had, boring, <laughs> right? And so do you remember um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? It's still on that TV show, right? So I took that concept. This is back in, let's see, that was, I started my business, oh my gosh, in 2004, year 2004. So this was back in 1999. So I made a whole game show called Who Want to Be a Chocolate Heir? So the, the thing that I did is I took that kind of concept and I made it into a game so that everyone in the audience had an opportunity to win chocolate. <laughs> and the organization that I worked for, the, the board was like, you need to teach everybody to do what you're doing. And I went from somebody who didn't write very well. I didn't have any, I didn't think I had skills. I didn't think I had a creative bone in my body to realizing when I came to writing presentations, my creativity soared. Mm-hmm. It just flourished. And I didn't even know I had any of it. So that's that whole part. If you engage your audience as well, they're going to recommend you, they're going to love you, and they're going to refer you. I like that creative part because a lot of people, you know, they'll say, well, I'm not creative, but we can come up with something like that. I do. That's what I said. I'm not creative. Yeah. Yeah. And and you kind of catch the audience almost off guard because they're not expecting it. And now they're like, oh, I should pay attention to this. I want to say something. That's cool. That's cool. So I'm going to put up the dates here one more time. And um, if anybody's on the replay and you have questions for Amanda Rose, please post them. She'll come back and later on and mm-hmm. she will ask them. And I'm also going to put the link up here one more time for all of those that may be interested. And that is empoweredspeakerevent.com. And is there anything else you want to say about the event? Uh, sure. I would love to. I would love special to. for them if they sign up today? It is. So if you are a business owner, an entrepreneur that needs to get out in front of audiences, get interviews, podcasts, videos, live Facebook live interviews like this, and you want to reach more people, then you want to do the VIP ticket at EmpoweredSpeakerEvent.com. The VIP ticket goes up to 997. So right now it's just 297. And I'm going to give you a special Gloria code, which is Gloria, Gloria VIP. And all caps, Gloria VIP, put in that code and you're going to save $50 on the ticket. Now, it's going to bring the ticket to $247 and you're going to get a $247 ticket for a value of $997. I got it. And I have, oh, hold on. Okay, so this is my workbook. There are over 70 pages in the workbook, in the VIP workbook. 70 templates, step by step in that workbook. And then, so in the end, if you're saying, okay, I'm not a business owner or entrepreneur, then you could do the general mission ticket. And the general mission ticket right now is just 147. That goes up to 597. And I've had people pay that much for those tickets. People seem to show up at my event last minute all the time. They walk in or they meet people, my attendees in the hallway, and they're like, you need to come. And they walk in and they pay the, the ticket price. So this is a great opportunity for you to get that early registration savings because it's going up. It's got it. I hold it out as long as I can. And this 147 147 for the general mission. There's no saving quote on that one because it is already so disc already such a use savings. But the VIP, uh, you'll get it for 247 by using the Gloria VIP code in that on that page. It is good for three days. So you've got to take action quickly. Okay. So it's good. Oops, I'm trying to create a banner here. For three days only. Any last tips for everybody? I think when it comes to presenting, you really want to look at it as every time a presentation opportunity shows up, it is a window of opportunity for you. Now, you could rise to the occasion, right? You could give it your best, or you could let fear or doubt stand in your way. I am where I am in my life and in my business because I was willing to take the next steps. I, even though it scared the heck out of me to do this presentation in front of hundreds of people for the first time, horrible communicator, had no skills, I stepped up to the plate. So I believe if you step up to the plate, if you take the next steps, whether it's to apply the principles I shared with you, register, register for the event or both, 
If you take the next step, God's spirit universe will take two or three for you, but you have to be willing to take the next step. You can't let fear and doubt run you because if fear and doubt run you, it holds you back. If you, if you say fear and doubt, see you later, I'm moving forward, then fear and doubt lose their power. So take the next steps that you need to take. I absolutely agree. And I just want to add one last thing that Amanda Rose helped me with. So some of you out there may be thinking, well, I don't like to talk about money. I don't like to sell myself. I'm going to get up there and I can tell my story maybe, but the minute I have to sell something, oh God, no. Amanda, how can you help us through that? Because, well, at the event and in my coaching, we really address the mindset around it. Listen, I was a social worker. The most I have ever sold prior to that was getting my husband to go to a movie that I wanted to see. That was it. I didn't sell anything. And I want you to look at it from this perspective. If you do not offer what you have to offer, then you are slamming the door shut on those individuals that need your help. You're literally slamming the door on them and saying, sorry, you don't get to know what I get, how I can help you further. They need your help. And at Empower right. Speaker event, we literally cover step by steps on how to the mindset around money, how to open yourself to receiving more, how to actually put program a program together that makes it a no brainer no brainer for your audience too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, and you really helped me through that. So I want to thank you for that. I also oh, want to thank you for your time today on this lunch and learn that we did virtually for all of you guys out there. So if you, you didn't get us live, then come on the replay. I'm also going to upload it to YouTube, right, Amanda? Is that good for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And then you can share it with friends. And remember, over the next three days, if you go to her website, I'll put it up one more time here, empoweredspeakerevent.com, and you enter the code Gloria VIP. she's going to give you an extra $50 off for the next three days only, only. just showed up here. Amanda. Thank you so much. You're always an inspiration to me and many of others. And like I said, guys, you're going to meet some great people there. I'm actually collaborating with some of those people right now. And it's just a beautiful <laughs> community of heart-centered entrepreneurs. Thank you very much for being here today. We're going to thank say goodbye. Gonna give her some hearts and loves and thank you. And then I'm going to finish up here. So have a great day, Amanda. All right. Bye, everybody. Love you all. So I hope you enjoyed, you know, listening to Amanda Rose give you some tips on speaking because, you know, you all have powerful stories out there. We know that. And I desire to inspire to have you help others, okay, through those stories. So part of what I do, you guys know, is I am also a coach that helps you get past those fears when you're like doubting yourself too. And so you combine Amanda, you combine coaching that can help you get into your sole purpose and stand on stage with a lot, a lot of confidence. But I really hope that you take advantage of her special. It is a phenomenal three-day event. You will not be disappointed at all. So it's Empowered Speaker event. And remember to enter the code that she gave you. I'm also going to give you her website if you want to learn more about Amanda Rose. And again, post your questions down below and we'll be back to answer them. Thank you, everybody. We are here to inspire you in any way we can so that you can inspire the world. God bless you all.